Hello friends, uh, we'll be talking about cube and cube roots in this session. Let's, let's first understand the definition of cubes. Cubes are the numbers that we get by multiplying an integer with itself three times. So how do we represent it? We represent a cube, say for example m is equal to a cube, which means a multiplied by a multiplied by a. Now the cube of any natural number is also called perfect cube. Cube number is equal to the volume of the figure of a three dimensional figure cube with the side a. When we say m is equal to a cube, we are actually saying if we have a cube of side a, then the volume of this cube will be a cube. So that number is called a cube number. Let's now look at some of the properties of the cube numbers. The cube of any even number is always even. So it is clear that you know any even number will always have 2 as its factor. So its cube will always again have 2 as its factor which actually means 8 as its factor. So that necessarily means that cube will also be an even number. Similarly, the cube of an odd number will always be odd because the number itself does not have 2 as its factor. So its cube cannot have 2 as its factor which means that the cube of an odd number will always be odd. The cube of a negative number is negative clearly because we multiply a negative number, a negative sign with itself three times, the result is a negative number. And the cube of a positive number will always be positive because again, you know, a positive number multiplied with, with itself as many times will still result in a positive number. Let's look at some, some more properties of the cube numbers. Now, there is a definite relation between the digits of the cube number, the units digit of the cube number and the units digit of the number whose cube it is. So let's understand that relation. Now if the units digit of the number is 1, it's the units digit of the cube will always be 1. We can take an example. Say for example 11 multiplied by 11 gives 121 and that multiplied by a 11 again gives you 1331. Three, one. So it is simply 1 getting multiplied with itself 3 times resulting in a units digit of the cube which is again 1. If the units digit of the number is 2, its cube's units digit will be 8. Units digit of a number is 3, its units digit of its cube will be 7. 3 multiplied by 3 gives us 9 and 9 again multiplied by 3 gives us 27. So that 7 comes in the units place. So any number with a units digit of 3 will have the units digit of its cube as 7. Similarly, units digit of a number is 4, then the units digit of its cube is also 4. If the units digit of the number is 5, again its units digit of its cube will also be 5. If the units digit of a number is 6, the units digit of its cube will also be 6. If the units digit of a number is 7, the units digit of its cube is 3. Units digit of a number is 8. The units digit of its cube is 2. If the units digit of a number is 9, the units digit of its cube is also 9. And if the units digit of a number is 0, its units digit of its cube is also 0 and it will actually have end with 3 zeros in the end. Now, first thing we can we can observe this the units digit of this of the cubes of all the numbers and we can try and make some pattern out of it. So let's first of all see that the units digit of the cubes are starting from 0 
one two three four five six seven eight nine so it covers the units digits of the cube covers all the digits so that means unlike squares where we had a few digits which could not appear in the in any perfect square numbers unlike that in cubes we can have any digit in the units place and it could still be a perfect cube so that is the first thing that we need to make uh, understand so it will not be able to rule out by looking at the units digit we cannot rule out that this number cannot be a cube the second thing second pattern that we can make out here is that for one for units digit of the number being one units digit of its cube is also one same is true in case of four same is true in case of five in case of six in case of nine in case of zero so zero one four five six and nine these are the five digits which if exist in the units digit of the number the same digit will appear in its cube as well for all others there is only one and correspond one and the only one corresponding units digit in the cube so we need to know all of these now let's look at some interesting pattern related to the cubes adding n consecutive odd integer odd numbers we get a perfect cube now but this is not the important thing to understand here is this is not like adding n consecutive odd numbers starting from 1 it is not like that it is adding some n consecutive odd numbers we get a perfect cube let's take an example if we look at 2 cube which is 8 it is 3 plus 5 if we look at 9 cube which is 729 it is the addition of 73 75 77 79 81 83 85 87 89 87 and 89 again n which means n is in this case 9 so we have n is equal to 9 in this case and if we see we have numbers 73 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 8 and 9 so we have nine consecutive odd numbers added together to give us the cube of 9 now the important thing to note here is which n odd numbers do i add to get a perfect cube because if i know that that is only a place where i can pick where this information could add value to me otherwise knowing that some add some n consecutive add num or numbers added together will give me a perfect cube of n does not help me right so let's try and find out which n odd numbers should be added together now if the value of n is odd as was the case here 9 is an odd number we need to add n square n square in this case is 81 to n minus 1 by 2 so n minus 1 which gives you 8 by 2 equals to 4 so we need to add four odd numbers just prior to n square so n square is 81 in this case four odd numbers just prior to that which is 79 77 75 and 73 and again n minus 1 by 2 which is four odd numbers just after the square of n which is 83 85 87 89 in this case now this is what will give you n cube so you could take any other example and see if it works now what if the value of n is odd sorry even so if we have n as the even value which is in this case in the case of 2 cube we have n as 2 now n square itself will be even so we cannot add n square here because we are saying it is n consecutive odd numbers so we'll add n by 2 odd numbers just prior to n square so prior to n square means n square in this case would have been 4 so just prior to that 
the odd number is 3 and n by 2 because n in this case is 2 so we get n by 2 equal to 1 so just one odd number just prior to n square and again n by 2 odd numbers just after n square which is 5 in this case so we get n cube now if you can use identities you will be able to prove this also mathematically how do we arrive at this and you can also check this relation for different odd and even values of n and c that this is an interesting pattern that you'll see and you can use this during your mathematical calculations now uh, let's look at the factors of the cubes now since a perfect cube m is of the type a cube where a is a natural number therefore all the prime factors of a would also be factors of m and they would appear three times because m is the cube of a so every factor of a would be multiplied with itself three times to get m so if we can clearly say that if a is equal to p1 into p2 into p3 and these are the prime factors and we could say till p n so m will be equal to p1 cube multiplied by p2 cube multiplied by p3 cube and so on till p n cube so as many prime factors that a has all of them would be present in the factors of m and multiplied with itself three times Now let's see uh, how do we find smallest multiple that is a perfect cube. So in case we are provided with a number and we need to find out whether this is a perfect cube or not and if this is not a perfect cube what is which smallest multiple of that number will be a perfect cube. How do we do that? First of all we will find all the prime factors of the given numbers. So we will group the prime factors in the in triplets so as we just said as we just mentioned that you know every prime factor will appear three times basically the cube of every prime factor should appear if it's a perfect cube if the number is a perfect cube so now we'll group the prime factors in triplets the prime factor which is present only once or twice needs to be multiplied with itself two or one time respectively to get a perfect cube so supposing a factor appears only once now we know to make it a perfect cube we need to have that same factor in triplet we will need to multiply it twice with itself similarly the factor which appears twice will need to be multiplied with itself one more time to get to make the number a perfect cube so we find out those factors and find out how many times do they need to be multiplied friends I hope you enjoyed the session. If you find it useful, please like it and share it with your friends. You can visit us at our Cool Smart Learning website and post your queries there. And please subscribe to the Cool Smart Learning channel for getting updates on the new sessions. Thank you.